We got a first in the fish cave, guys. Madaka rainbow, uh, Madaka rice fish eggs. Kind of like a mini rainbow, like a pseudo mugle, but it's not. This is a Madaka rainbow. Uh, a Madaka. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. These are Japanese rice fish. These are platinum variety. And um, yeah, that one's got eggs. It's a female carrying the eggs. <laughs> We've got more new fish. This time we got some fish in from Hawaii. Pretty cool. This little 10 gallon tank that I just set up the other day is gonna be for these fish we just, uh, we just got in. Um, these are fish we hatched out uh, as eggs from Spain. And this is another species of eggs, uh, of fish that we hatched out from eggs from Spain. So these guys are doing well. Um, kind of went on a little buying spree here before it gets too cold and people stop shipping fish for the winter. This was an aqua bid purchase. Pretty, pretty excited to get these in. Um, it's pretty neat ordering fish. I mean, obviously Hawaii is a state here, but it's pretty neat that they're coming all the way from Hawaii. Um, I'm not sure, big island, small island, Ka Kanehi, Kane Kanoio, oh man, Kano Kaneohi, Kaneohi. I'm probably butchering that, but anyone knows what island that is let me know it's kind of cool but um let's see what we got here guys insulation nicely packed it looks like let's get into this bag real quick it's so hard to do this one-handed okay i got that open it feels kind of nice and warmer in here uh, let's take a look in these bags here it's supposed to be 12 fish oh wow he's got them individually bagged it looks like um, looks like alive, alive. These guys are Japanese rice fish or Madaka. Um, these are a platinum variety. It looks like you can kind of see right there. So really excited to get these guys in, man. You don't see these too often in the States. Um, there is some moisture in the bag. So I wonder if one of these kind of, uh, did bust. Some of these are smaller than the others, but seem to be alive. Is there two in there? I can't tell. looks like there'd be even two in this left bag. Oh, he's down there in the bottom, a tiny guy, tinier guy. Okay, so that's two, four, six, eight, ten. Let's see the last bag. So it looks like, even though there was some moisture, looks like we have all 12 fish, maybe even a 13th. Looks like at least one of the bags had two. We got all the rice fish out of the box. We unbagged all of them, and there was one extra, so we got a lucky 13. They can be kept year-round in a lot of climates. Um, they can be overwintered. I've seen plenty of videos with them uh, being kept in ponds under ice. Uh, Corey from Aquarium Co-op keeps them that way. I'm gonna potentially test them. I know they'll survive winter in Florida, so I wanna keep them outside during winter here in Florida, but I'm not really sure of their upper range in temperatures, so I'm gonna keep them here in the house for now. Um, then definitely move them outside to the garage, maybe even out back. The temperature of the water in the in the house here, I'll just keep it here without, without <laughs> Bobo, shush. I keep it here without, uh, Brindle. Hey, it's okay. People are walking outside. These guys are my, my alarm system. But uh, keep it here without any heaters. So it stays pretty cool here in the house. Normal acclimation process, like I would just literally just kind of slowly add a little bit of the tank water into theirs, as well as kind of, as you can see, you know, let this tub sit in this water so that it will slowly acclimate. They've been acclimating now for oh, a little over 30 minutes or so and slowly adding water in. So they're at temperature. Gonna let these guys go. They seem really feisty, like they're moving around a lot. Check a look at them from the side down here. Not ideal situation because we got <laughs> tanks in the back here. Seem to be really uh, acclimating just fine. Uh, but I'm gonna shut up now. Looks like these guys should survive and thrive and hopefully we'll get these guys breeding. That one's got eggs. It's a female carrying the eggs on her anal fin. So she's fam um, carrying them around. I'm, I don't think I'm gonna collect them. There's some guppy grass in the back there. There's an Amazon sword over here. I'm not really sure if we're gonna have success. Uh, we have some snails in here. We have some hillstream loaches. So I'm not really sure if they're gonna be successfully uh, be able to raise and breed in here. But um, I wanna try. I wanna see if we can. Because if I start pulling them from the get-go, we'll never know. 
But if I um, attempt to see if some will raise up in here, it may not be 100%, but I want to see. Um, but terribly excited, guys. Oh, man, this is awesome. And hopefully over the next few uh, few days, we'll see some more. I thought that was like the female, kind of like a balloon type, but maybe that's just a little deformity. So I might have to pull him or her out of the breeding group, to be honest. Finanza, Bonanza. Oh my gosh, I promise I won't curse this time, but this female has eggs. There's like three or four females with eggs. They're not hanging as far behind as the female from yesterday. In fact, I couldn't find the female from yesterday. I'm not sure if she dropped them or not, um, but there is quite a few females um, with eggs on their anal fins. So we are on the cusp, hopefully, of a uh, rice fish, rice fish, no rainbow fish here, of a rice fish explosion. Really excited, super excited. This is the first time I've had Madaka rice fish eggs. So what I've done is I noticed one female with eggs uh, yesterday, last night, and then this morning, or earlier today, I noticed a few more females with eggs, not a large bunch, but just a few by their anal fin. Um, and I was gonna just kind of hopefully let them lay eggs in here. I was floating some mops uh, but the mops got infested with snails and I didn't see the eggs on their anal fins anymore. So I wasn't sure where they were dropping them, if they were dropping them in the mop and then they were getting eaten, yada, yada, yada. So in order to control it a little more, I found one female that has a little clutch of eggs. Probably looks like, I don't know, maybe a dozen eggs, maybe 10, eight to a dozen eggs, call it. And we're gonna see if she puts them in that spawning mop. I got it sectioned off where these two thirds are for her in the spawning mop. And then this one third is just empty right now. So if I find another female, maybe I'll put it over there. Just gonna try to see what method is gonna work best for, uh, for our purposes here, breeding these guys, trying to get, um, you know, most, uh, most efficient and, um, you know, get the most to survive. Cause we do have these snails and then also some hillstream loaches in this tank also. These are some of the babies, but there's some adult hillstream loaches that I'm sure if given the chance would like a nice little tasty um, snack of eggs. Later. We're still getting eggs. I switched up how we're doing it a little bit, but I'm noticing a pattern. Every morning I see the eggs and then by the afternoon, evening, they're gone. As you can see on her anal fin, there's a decent amount of eggs on this female. And um, usually I've been noticing them in the mornings and then I've been trying to um, play around and test and see. So I would, you know, harvest or just place a few females in here and notice that um, no matter what I did with that, by the end of the day, the females, wherever they were, pretty much had released the eggs. And then the next morning, some more females would have eggs as well. So it's almost like a daily basis we're getting eggs from these, uh, from these fish. I was placing um, a fish in here with a spawning mop. And then once she released the eggs to the spawning mop, putting her back in the tank and putting a clipping of the spawning mop with some of the eggs on it, kind of like this. It's a piece of the spawning mop, which is just yarn with a clutch of eggs on it. And then um, going with that. But they were starting to fungus in this left side of the hang on box. So it wasn't gonna work. I needed to add some methylene blue or do something else in order to prevent fungus. In this case, I went with methylene blue. I don't know if they're making it as much anymore. I still have a bottle from, um, from Cordon that I bought a year or two ago. There's two clutches right in the front there from two different females over the last couple days that went right from their anal fins onto either spawning mop or in this case, guppy grass. And you can see, I think this guppy grass uh, may even have some eggs still stuck on it right there. Hanging like little Christmas ornaments. It's hard to see, but there's eggs stuck right there on that guppy grass. That's actually from the female yesterday. I'm gonna leave them in here and see if they, if they um, fuzz up or not. My approach to breeding is always see if I can do it the easiest, most efficient way possible for me. And if that doesn't work, then take additional steps. Like if I could have bred and raised the eggs without having to do methylene blue, that was the goal. So it didn't work the first time. I'm still gonna try. And it looks like it's not gonna work. We're gonna need to use methylene blue, which is okay. But if I could figure out a way to not use it, that'd be ideal. We're gonna add some plants in here because I like the way that they lay the eggs on the plants rather than the spawning mop. So I wanna grab some, uh, some guppy grass from in here. And then hopefully by the end of this evening, I'll check again this afternoon and this evening, and they should have um, released all the eggs and then transfer them to the methylene blue. And then eventually 
we'll start taking them out of here and putting them into another tank to start raising the fry. All right, guys, the eggs have been sitting here in the methylene blue. It's really hard to see. There we go. If you can see, they are starting to eye up. So we are getting to see them. They're definitely viable eggs. I'm going to transfer them from this container with the methylene blue over to this marina hang on breeder box and um, let them hatch out in here. I just put some pieces of guppy grass, nothing else in here. I've been letting this kind of cycle. So this has got the same water as the tank, which is where I'm going to eventually move them. This is where the parents are right now. I left some eggs in here still to see how they do. Um, these eggs actually were just dropped yesterday, so they have not fungus, not surprised there. Um, but some of these other eggs that are hanging on top or hanging among this guppy grass have been here for longer. You can see the ones in the back, I think, are starting to eye up a little bit. It's really hard to tell. I mean, these things are minuscule. We did get these in the mail as juveniles, but we did hatch out some others from eggs. So we have some experience, although we, it's not like we're experts. Um, but we're hoping to uh, get, a, get the hang of things and get our groove with these. But we'll follow up here once we move these eggs and hopefully they hatch out. I feel like I'm looking at these things under a microscope, but this is literally just my phone zoomed in. There's some methylene blue. 